This week on Supercars Talk, I try another drink and discuss Scott McLaughlin's IndyCar hopes. So a couple of people asked me why I didn't mention the Bathurst 12 hour last week and um, considering this is Supercars Talk, I'm trying to keep it a bit on topic. Um, there's a fair bit of news to cover each week at the moment, surprisingly, even though there's no racing. Um, I'm trying to keep the videos around that kind of 15, 20 minutes to uh, keep people interested. Um, so that's why I didn't um, mention the 12 hour. Uh, there was a race at Bathurst last week, the Bathurst 12 hour for those GT3 cars. Um, I'd have to admit, I didn't bother getting up to watch the start. I did watch bits and pieces during the day. Um, apparently, I think there was only four safety car periods. I I think I was unlucky and copped about three of those each time I tried to sit down and watch a bit. Um, so I didn't get to see a hell of a lot of action. Um, but that's kind of uh, where I'm at with it. Um, yeah, I'm not a once a year warrior that kind of watches that race. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, as I've probably made um, pretty clear in these videos, mainly kind of super supercars. I uh, watch a fair bit of Super 2 um, and IndyCar and F1 as well. Um, that takes up a lot of my time, so I don't tend to follow any other categories too much. Um, this week, uh, brought to you by Red Bull. Um, now, believe it or not, I haven't actually tried Red Bull for, it'd be bordering on probably 20 years. Um, and every other time I've tried it, it's been with uh, some vodka at a club. Um, late in the night, someone goes, hey, Red Bull and vodka, sounds like a brilliant idea. Um, so this is actually going to be interesting. Um, not actually sponsored by Red Bull either. I bought this at the supermarket yesterday. Um, There's actually a deal two for five. Uh, so I've actually got a couple other cans to try as well. Um, well, three other cans because we bought $10, $10 worth of Red Bull yesterday. Um, so yeah, uh, as we can do the crack test, it is a new can. Um, and I'll uh, take a sip of this to see what it's like. Bottoms up. Actually, not as bad as I remember. <laughs> That's not too bad, actually. I'll, um, yeah, the second sip's not quite as good. Um, yeah, I was expecting that to be, um, I recall it being quite bad. And um, those were in the days when I was drunk. Um, it's kind of drinkable. Maybe maybe that changed it a bit. Um, did have a fair bit of coffee this morning for breakfast. Anyway, so we'll continue on with that while I'm filming. Um, some news for the week. Uh, Ches Mostert revealed his uh, helmet livery. Uh, Woodstock uh, bourbon on there. Um, might be another product for me to try, hey? Um, I wonder if there's any more to this or whether it is just a personal sponsorship deal on his helmet or whether it might be the Woodstock mobile car. Um, I'm still banking on a tool brand being on there. Um, I've, I've been told that there's another tool brand out there that is going to be a full car sponsorship um, and we're running out of places to uh, put it. So we'll see, we'll see about that one whether or whether I've been fed some dud information again. Anyway... Um, Adam DeBore finally confirmed there, um, you could say one of the worst kept secrets of the paddock. Um, that's, as I've said for quite a while, that's probably one of the reasons that Chaz was going there, that he got to bring his engineer with him. Um, happy days. Chaz will have a new car too, if I haven't mentioned that before. Um, so he hasn't got one of, you know, the dogs of a car that Courtney and Pi have had to run with, or even Tanda had, um, for a few years there, uh, so it's um, all, ch all changed there this year. Um, speaking of sponsors, uh, James Courtney's car turned up uh, for the official season launch um, thing during the week um, in Coke livery. Uh, now this was a very, very basic paint job. I'm not sure what that means, whether it's a uh, we really just want to show that we're sponsored by Coke um, and not get it confused with any others. Um, you know, that maybe there's still a big livery launch and that and launching the second car and whatever at the same time. Maybe they're holding back for that, but you know, kind of wanted to get out there that we have got Coke. So um, 
it doesn't get leaked beforehand. Um, they they get to kind of announce it in that, and it you know gets splashed everywhere that it's a coke car. Um, did look rushed though. Not sure if it was the last minute thing that got signed, and they wanted to get it out there, or you know possibly the deal's not quite over the line yet. But you know put the stickers on the car, and you know everyone thinks it's happened and whatever, and. Um, yeah, maybe they convince Kike to sign on board because, you know, oh, look at all of the views or whatever over the weekend, you know, gets the name right out there. Um, well, we'll see what happens come Adelaide. The biggest story of the week, uh, Scott McLaughlin will be racing an IndyCar at Indy this year. Um, not in the 500, but he will be racing the Indy Grand Prix that uh, happens two weeks before the 500, I think it is. Um, and he will be going and testing at Circuit of the Americas uh, actually this week because um, I'm um, doing this on Tuesday and, uh, Wednesday and Thursday he's actually doing the testing at Circuit of the Americas so this he's not going to be racing in the 500 just in the, uh, the Grand Prix on the um, road circuit at Indy there um, a couple of weeks beforehand this will be uh, Helio Castro Nevis's car for the 500. And what's happened the previous few years is that Helio, he hasn't been a full-time driver. He's just done the month of May with uh, Penske. So Helio would run the, um, the Indy Grand Prix as well as the 500. And basically what they, they run the Grand Prix just to get the pit crew and that um, up to speed because it is a bonus car for the 500. And Penske being Penske, they want to do things right. So there's, you know, those one-off teams that come along and you see them have errors in the pits. Um, like the Penske guys will be guys from their IMSA team and things like that. But just to get them, you know, real-world experience um, in the IndyCar paddock kind of, you know, for one race before. So this is using Scott kind of as a bit of a warm-up for Helio's car at 500. Plus also means that they can go and test the car at Circuit of the Americas next week in the open test. So... Penske has four cars at the test um, without anyone kicking up a stink because it is actually an entry. So we won't see McLaughlin racing at the 500 unless he signs for another team, which I can't see Penske letting him do it. Um, and it is a bit of a, you know, a workaround for Penske to get an extra car out there testing. But it could move on to greater things because two of the drivers at Penske at the moment, um, Simon Pagina and Will Power, are both out of contracts at the end of the year. Power is not getting younger. Um, he's probably more towards the end of his career. And if he hadn't have won a couple of races at the end of last year, I would be fairly certain that this would be his last year there. Um, but he has proven that he can go out and win races. Um, and then Simon Pagano, uh, he was in a similar boat, um, but then went out and won the Indy GP and the Indy 500 last year. But the, apparently there's a few other teams sniffing around, most notably uh, McLaren, sniffing around for his services. So um, either of those two could be moving on, which would open up a seat for Scott. So, you know, stranger things have happened. We could see McLaughlin in an Indy car in 2021. Um, and also, I'm wondering if uh, this decision by one Jamie Winkup is kind of dependent on what Scott does. Um, if Scott decides to hang around in Australia, um, Jamie might retire. Whereas if Scott goes off to America land, um, maybe Jamie will hang on to uh, knock up a couple more championships. Um, yeah, watch this space on that one. Interesting little piece of news came out this week. There won't be any free-to-air television from The Bend this year. Um, so the, the 500 is at The Bend this year. Um, no free-to-air TV. So if you want to watch it, well, no live free-to-air TV. The, the races are still, you know, delayed or whatever. You get your highlights package. Um, a lot of people count that as, oh, can't watch it at all. Um, apparently, the stuff up is that the TV, the free-to-air TV contract says that we're going to televise Adelaide, Townsville, Bathurst, Sandown, Newcastle. It doesn't say that we're going to televise, you know, the opening round the 1,000, the 500, the last round. Um, it actually specifies the locations. So contract says Sandown, they've got a televised Sandown apparently. Um, so if um, yeah, if you're on free-to-air TV and want to watch the Bend live, well, um, 
Got to get some Foxtel. Finally, the um, shocks for this year have uh, been released as the Pedders Super Shock. Uh, so Super Shock are building them. They, they've been supplying quite a few teams uh, in the field. Um, mainly Tickford and I think Erebus have been using them the last few years. Um, but they're going to be branded uh, a Pedders product. Um, that doesn't mean Pedders are building them. Super Shock are building them. Pedders are branding them, um, much like the, the Mustang or whatever, the safety car is a Ford Mustang built by Ford, got Pedders sponsorship on it, so similar thing like that. Um, what was interesting about this announcement though, um, didn't come out from Pedders or supercars or anything, it was actually um, uh, Team 18, Steve Richards, he's not um, co-driving anymore, he's just got an ambassador role or whatever with the team. Um, he announced it kind of on his social media and did a little video and stuff about it. Um, interesting that they've gone about it that way. I would have thought that maybe Supercars or um, Petters or something like that would have released it. But anyway, um, if that's what you want, how you want to get it out there, well, off you go. There's been a little bit of a stumbling block with uh, the moving of the uh, New Zealand rounds. Um, we've found out now that Hampton Downs is only allowed to have 20,000 spectators uh, for the day there. So apparently in 2012 they tried to get um, consent or whatever to get 50,000 spectators in there for an event, uh, but that was knocked back. They're working on trying to increase that. Um, but. It, Depends. If you, if you like the Gold Coast Suns or something, AFL team, you'd probably be pretty pumped if uh, you got 20,000 spectators. Um, but a New Zealand supercast round, um, I think you probably want to uh, have a few more than that. Um, uh, Bukako is one of the best attended rounds, I think, outside of probably Adelaide and Bathurst. So, um, yeah, that's quite a few less. And if... Uh, you know, the pre-ticket sales of Pukio are possibly higher than that. So, you know, you might be turning away some people who've already bought tickets, which is uh, could be quite interesting. Um, it's pretty hot out here today, so I might try and have a bit more of this. The can's sweating a bit. So. It's, um, it's okay. It's, I don't think I'll be buying any more, but um, it's not as bad as what I remember. So, we've got uh, the control tyres for this year. Um, I think I've explained this before. Previously, we had the soft and the super soft, which that's just dumb in itself. Now, they're going to be called the hard and the soft, which is a lot easier to understand. Um, and last year, overall, they were allowed four, or they were given 436 new tyres over the year. This year, you're getting 504 new tyres, so that's an increase of a lot. Um, uh, 68. So it's a fair few more when you think that there's one less round. Um, so also, I've been through this before, but there's no tyre bank for this year essentially. So you take the car away on a Sunday uh, night uh, with four tyres on it and it comes back at the next round with four tyres on it. Um, you'd obviously, you pick the best four tyres that are left from that weekend, uh, but they're, they're, you're not taking away all of the tyre or you know pick and choosing a heap of tyres you've got to go and store back at your factory essentially the tyres that you're taking away are just so that you've got something on the car um, and then you get a whole heap of new tyres when you come back to the next round so we won't have them you know on at the end of the day on Friday with everyone going oh well I had no good tyres and this guy went quick he had some good tyres left and all that kind of everyone's just going to have good tyres so um, a lot easier to tell where everyone is and people will be setting up cars on good tyres rather than trying to set up cars on, you know, knackered tyres from the previous round or a few rounds ago and things like that. It's time for some Super 2 news and um, much like Gary Rogers last week, the Kellys have uh, decided to cancel their Super 2 program to focus on their Mustangs. Um, so if we translate that is... They had no one wanting to come along and pay a heap of money to drive an Altima for them for the year. So um, maybe whoever had money and wanted to be in an Altima went to Matt White Motorsport, who seems to be able to um, engineer those things pretty well. So um, if you're in the market for an uh, Altima, the Kellys have got a couple for sale. And um, I'd suggest taking them around to um, Matt White's place and get him to run them for you because he does a pretty good job of it.
Bathurst this year won't be a mini enduro for the Super 2s. Uh, it's going to be 2 by 125 kilometer races like it used to be. Um, the, the 250k thing, eh, it um, didn't work out quite the way they were hoping. And then there was the disaster last year where the, um, the Eggleston cars didn't line up with the Tickford uh, fueling hose and there's fuel going everywhere and their cars weren't getting fueled and things like that so it takes away that kind of mess that was there I won't get into why it happened and whatever but um it takes away from that and it goes back reverts more to a normal round for the Super 2 guys uh, probably a good idea um, probably actually be a bit cheaper for them as well Thomas Randall's got the all clear for Adelaide um, as he's got some testicular cancer um, he's good to go at Adelaide um, he will start having his chemo treatment after Adelaide and they've kind of worked it so that then he'll be ready for I think Simmons is round two and then they'll get a bit of a break and he can have his second round of it before Townsville and things like that um, so they're, they're working his treatment around so he should be able to do the year um, be interesting to see how all of this affects his performance um, I know he's just started back into training he hadn't been able to do anything I think since kind of Christmas when um, it got found out so um, fingers crossed for him um, and uh, you know hopefully it all goes well and hopefully he has a good year behind the wheel Jack Perkins has announced that he's going to do the full season with Eggleston Motorsport this year uh, Brody Kostecki is going to be his teammate um, Perkins the Eggleston cars were kind of nowhere most of last year uh, and Perkins did actually win the round there at Sandown for them so um, that's quite good and I'd hopefully I'd you know I like Jack uh, and hopefully this is probably you know practice for a co-driver role um, probably still with Morgan Shaws or maybe he'll go to Techno Team Sydney um, with James Courtney because they, they seem to be quite happy together to finish this week, I've got a what the fuck moment. Uh, so anyway, things I just don't understand sometimes with supercars. So Sean Seymour, the king of all things supercars, has come out and suggested that we change the circuits to improve the racing. Now, okay, why, which, we just change the cars because they've got too much downforce but we half asked that why aren't we take you know take all the downforce off the cars and then we don't have to change the circuits um that would have just been uh, to me that would have been a lot more simple we're changing the cars anyway so let's change it properly um which should improve the racing pretty simple what doubled the confusion on this for me is that he suggested it's easier to change street circuits than permanent circuits. Um, the problem with street circuits usually is that there's buildings and walls and things like that that are around and that's why they where they are and why they're tight and why passing's hard around there. Um, I think you'd probably if you went to Winton and um, kind of went oh let's change the profile of turn one you got paddock or whatever to change it. Um, you go to Gold Coast and go, let's change turn one. Oh, we'll, we'll just move this office building or whatever's on the, you know, the side of the road there. Um, yeah, you look around there and you got these bloody, you know, 20 story things that um, not really easy to move that. So I'm not sure. Um, I mean, they reprofiled the, la or the, the hairpin at Newcastle last year to try and make racing a little bit better. Um, there is things like that or you know like the hairpin at Adelaide where you're in a bit of a parkland or you know um, you could change Townsville some of that quite easily um, but yeah to, to suggest that you can just change street circuits easily um, or that it's easier to change them than a permanent circuit um, I just I felt that that was a very strange thing to say and we're changing the cars at the moment to try and improve the racing well why didn't we just do that properly? Why do we have to keep like band-aid, 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 band-aid? Just get in there, do it prop, do it once, do it properly. It's pretty simple. Um, I'll leave leave the rest of that round there. So um, yeah, Red Bull. Um, definitely the the 
the fireball from last week, I'm uh, when I've got some more money, I'm definitely going to go and buy a full bottle of that because that was a very enjoyable drop. Um, this I'm more drinking this because it's very warm out here today. Um, I didn't bring any water. There we go. Not as bad as I remember from the old days, but um, yeah, got a bit of a tang to it. Um, open to product suggestions. I've um, put some down here that I need to try. Uh, the Woodstock Bourbon, of course. Um, Chad's new sponsor, Coca-Cola. And believe it or not, I have had some Coke Zero recently. I haven't actually had a normal Coke for quite a long time, so it will be interesting. Um, and on the energy drinks, got Monster down there. And um, one of my old favourites, Pepsi Max. Um, not a current sponsor, but you know, a sponsor from the past. Um, I'm open to suggestions if, if anyone thinks of any that um, you know I could or should try. Um, not going to be trying any cigarette brands. I can tell you there if you know anyone wants to be a smartass. Um, probably drinks that I can you know get at the supermarket while shopping or you know or the bottle shop. You know things like that would probably be easier. Um, do you know I, I am open to suggestions so so you know send them out and I'll see what I can do so uh, until next time I'll see you later put away your inhibitions let the beast in you just get loose we all young wild and different we can all get lit from a little goose I know you're terrified but